Hello champions, hello chair smooth family. Today we'll speak about fianchetto bishops. Some people pronounce it fianchetto, some people fianchetto. So it's not an English lesson, it's chess lesson. So it's about these bishops when you develop the bishops on the long diagonal. Overall, this is a very good strategy because bishops loves long diagonals. However, you might come with a question why after e4, g6 bishop g7 and b6 bishop b7 are not good moves. The thing is that when we are playing b6 and then g6 bishop g7, we are giving opponent a strong center. That's why after e4 the main openings are the ones which are fighting for the center, like e4, e5, Sicilian, French defense with next move d5, Karukan with next move d5, Scandinavian immediately d5, right? Uh, otherwise, if uh, on the center there was not this e22 pawns, b6 and then g6, this would be a good idea. Today I will show you a few examples, so it will help you to understand when to uh, develop your bishops on the long diagonals. So here is the first example, it's black to move. I refer you to pause the video and think where we are going to develop these bishops. Okay, let's start with the dark square bishop. Does it make sense here to play g6 and bishop g7? Not very much. The bishop on g7 will be limited with opponent's e5 pawn. So this bishop is better to develop through e6 and then to e7. What about this bishop on c8? Are we going to play e6 and limit this bishop? Or we are going to play bishop g4 and next move e6, bishop e7? Well, this would be okay to play bishop g4, then e6, bishop e7. But why to develop the bishop on g4 when the bishop is going to feel wonderful on the long diagonal? Look, there is no e4 pawn, the pawn is on e5, and also white has not light square bishop. This is a very important moment. If opponent had a light square bishop, let's say on g2 or on e2, so it in future it could be on f3 and exchange these bishops, okay, this would be okay bishop, but not as a monster as it is now. On the long diagonal there is no pawn in front of it, and also white not has the bishop, so they can exchange this monster. So the idea is gonna be this bishop is going to stay on b7, and another bishop is going to stay on e7. It's possible that also to start with e6, and then b6, bishop b7. So it's the same, but not b6, uh, bishop b7, and then g6, bishop g7. Bishop will not st uh, do here much, because the e5 pawn is limiting the bishop on g7. Let's go another example. Here is black to move, how to continue, I forgot to post the video and think. Okay, most probably the king is not gonna be castled on the short side because the pawn is on f6 and the king is going to be weak. So the king is going to be transferred to the long side. Do we need to play bishop d7 long castle or we have something else? Okay, in this case b6 becomes a very strong move. b6 then bishop b7. You can see there are no pawn on e4 in front of the bishop and also white doesn't have the light square bishop so they can exchange this bishop. Also, next, after a long castle and rook g8 move, together these three pieces are going to put huge pressure on opponent g2 and f3. Okay, so here just b6, bishop b7, and your black has advantage. Black to move, what to play? Are you ready to pause the video and think? Okay, we need to finish the development. Uh, so here, bishop on f8 and bishop c8, we need to do something with them. By the way, from which bishop we should start thinking? Should we develop this bishop first or this bishop on a fight? Well, the answer we should uh, here develop first the bishop on a fight. Because bishop on c8 is more or less doing something on this diagonal. Bishop on a fight is the one who has no move. Should we play here e6 or e5 then bishop e7? We could, but here opponent's uh, long diagonal a1, h8 is very weak, there is no d4 pawn, and also white doesn't have the dark square bishop. So here g6 becomes the best move. g6, then bishop g7, bishop goes to the long diagonal. Later we will figure out what to do with this bishop. It can stay on f5, but we will see it later. First we do g6, bishop g7, taking the bishop to the best square for it. I will show you a part from the game Jobava Duda. Jobava plays b3, his favorite move. He wants to play bishop b2. And here Duda played g6. b6, 
bishop b2, knight f6, also interesting setup. Next move, black wants to play bishop g7 and uh, the strong bishop on b2 will have a competitor on the long diagonal. Chivova takes here bishop f6, ef6 and plays c4. He uh, gives up this bishop but ruins black's pawn structure. Next he wants to play knight c3 and control the d5 square. But because here black has bishop pair advantage, black wants to uh, open the position and d5. cd5, queen d5, knight c3, queen a5, a3, white wants to play before and get something on the queen side, c5, not allowing white to play before, g3. How to continue, how to finish the development of these uh, bishops? Are you free to pause the video and think? Okay. White gave up their dark square bishop and there are no pawns in the center. If we play bishop g7 and f5, this bishop is going to be very strong. Black played bishop g7. Now after bishop g2, f5 move is coming with a tempo, attacking the c3 knight. Here, Joao played e3 with the idea after f5 to play knight g2. The knight defends the c3 and then to play bishop g2. And then what it will be after castle castle, the score gonna be 1-1. One, one. Black here has a very strong bishop and white here has a strong bishop. What did here do that? He played bishop d7. The idea is that after bishop g2, bishop c6 is going to exchange opponent's very strong bishop on g2. And after bishop c6, knight c6, castle castle, the score gonna be 1-0. Black has very strong bishop on the long diagonal and white has not on g2. The last uh, interesting example I prepared for you is from one of our chess mode openings. After e4, c5, knight c3, this Italian with knight c3 our favorite variation, e6, f4, d5, and knight f3, d4, knight e4, there is knight f6 move. And against it we take knight f6, queen f6, and here, when black doesn't have d5 pawn, we develop the bishop on f1 on the long diagonal playing g3, bishop g2. This would not be as good idea as now, because let's say here, uh, we play e5 and next move we play g3 bishop g2. It is not as strong as earlier, because now black has e6 and d5 pawn. Now when we play g3 and black doesn't have the d5 pawn, and the next move we play bishop g2, this bishop is going to do a very good job. And now the question is, what if black also plays b6? So after bishop g2, bishop b7, the score gonna be 1-1. One, one. What we can do after b6? Here is white to move, I offer you to pause the video and think, or if you are a chess mood member, try to memorize what I recommended here in the courses. Well, here white has a very strong move, knight e5. Now they are threatening to play bishop g2, after which the a8 rook will be lost. And if bishop b7, there is a very unpleasant bishop b5 track. There is no knight c6, there is no knight d7, and after king d8, short castle, black's king is in the center, at some point d4 is coming, and uh, bishop on b7 is a strong one, right. But at any time, uh, when white wants, they can play bishop e2, bishop f3, and remove this strong one. This bishop on b7 would be much stronger if white didn't have this bishop. But now this one will have competitor, and here the king in the center is the critical factor. After g3, b6, if there was not this very important knight e5 move after bishop g2, bishop b7, the position would be equal. But because of knight e5, black cannot play b6, and after bishop e7, bishop g2, now it's too late for them to play b6, because after knight e5, they will have problems with the rook on a8. Also, uh, black will have problems in the future to develop the bishop, because whenever b6, it's gonna be knight e5. And here, after g3, bishop g2, the bishop stays on the long diagonal, and because of this, white is going to pressure. At the end of today's lesson, I have a simple homework for you. The first homework, why to move, what to do, and the second homework, again, why to play, what to do. You can post your answers in the comments section. Thank you very much for all your support, for subscribing to our channel, liking the videos and sharing them with your friends. Thank you very much, see you very soon.